Amatsu is a powerful elder dragon introduced in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. He is the final boss of that game and has the power to create and control storms. Amatsu has a similar body structure to that of a leviathan and he floats through the air naturally without the use of wings. Historically, Amatsu is the very first elder dragon to be introduced in the Portable series of Monster Hunter, making him somewhat prestigious. In Portable 3rd, you fight him in a special arena called the Sacred Pinnacle, which is located high in the mountains and fairly close in proximity to Yukomo Village and the Misty Peaks. The battle against Amatsu takes place in a raging storm likely caused by him. In terms of physical attacks, he can swipe his forearm and swish his tail forward. He can dash forward while twisting through the air and charge across the arena up to twice in a row. He can even backflip. When enraged, his eyes and chest glow and he becomes much faster. Amatsu's main element is water and he can fire it from his mouth as a single projectile. He can also rise into the air and fire two powerful beams that track your position. He also has a special attack where he begins to charge up a huge cyclone, sucking in everyone in the area before releasing the energy he's charged by flying in rapid circles. He can also perform a much faster dash. Dealing enough damage will cause Amatsu to enter a second phase. He glows red, the storms intensify, and the music changes as he becomes faster, performing attacks at a faster rate. His roar is different too. By spinning rapidly, he can create three cyclones that move outwards, before coming together, serving as massive hazards to watch out for as he performs other attacks. He has a special attack, where he flies high into the sky and performs several quick and powerful water beam sweeps that have after explosions. He does them rapidly, which makes it hard to dodge them all. It's worth mentioning, his huge cyclone can be prevented either by dealing enough damage or firing from a ballista, which causes him to fall over. You can also sever his tail. Using a ballista binder is possible, but not when his wind barrier is active. When defeating Amatsu, the storms around the sacred pinnacle will dissipate, giving way to clear sunny skies. You are also greeted to new music that plays only when you beat him, which differs from Portable 3rd's standard quest complete theme. Amato's role in Portable 3rd's story is that he drove out Zenoga from his original home high in the mountains which caused him to start creating trouble for people in the lower regions. This can even be seen in a special cutscene. So you can technically blame Amatsu for Zenoga being in every subsequent game, including 3 Ultimate and 4 Ultimate. Zenoga was in those games, but Amatsu completely skipped them. Portable 3rd was only released in Japan, and while I'm calling him Amatsu, he is known in Japan as Amatsu Magatsuchi. 4 Ultimate was technically the game that gave us a localized name, as you could obtain his materials through the Wiporium, and he was officially given the name Amatsu when he appeared in Monster Hunter Generations. In this game, he has a much more detailed model, although he still retains the same music. The Sacred Pinnacle also returned with a remastered appearance. Amatsu will still glow during Phase 2, but the effect of the storm intensifying isn't as drastic. In Portable 3rd, the sky would turn pink, while in Generations at most, you can see intensified lightning strikes in the distance. He can rush around in a circle, Otherwise, Amatsu in Generations is almost completely identical to how he was in Portable 3rd. All his old attacks are here, with nothing new. Although his suction powers are much more intense, and he can be mounted by players. To shake them off, he rises high into the air and flails around. In Generations Ultimate, Amatsu is fightable in Durank for the first time. He has a new attack, where he slams his tail into the ground and spins it around. Here's how the purified Sacred Pinnacle looks like in HD. Now there's a rainbow present, and the sun rays are much more intense. What's interesting is that in both Portable 3rd and Generations, the flora are still rapidly moving as if the storm is still raging, as are Amatsu's fins. Perhaps it hasn't fully subsided yet. Amatsu returned for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak's fifth title update. While the Amatsu in Portable 3rd is responsible for driving Zenoka out of his home, and in Generations is, you know, just there, this specific Amatsu is tied to Kamura villagers Kagero and Yamogi, as he destroyed their original home when the latter was just a baby. Now Amatsu threatens their new home of Kamura directly, and as such is encountered in the Infernal Springs rather than the Sacred Pinnacle. 
The Infernal Springs is a boss arena added to Monster Hunter Rise's second title update, over two years before Amatu was released for the game. You fight on the side of a mountain, with the water flowing, and the sky is dark and cloudy. Initially it was used for a couple of endgame quests, before later being used for more events, and in Sunbreak became the primary arena for Violet Mizutsune. So it gets reused for the Amatu battle with some changes. The most apparent one is that the sky is stormy, in line with previous fights. The Infernal Springs used to have pillars on one side of the arena, but they're not present when fighting Amatsu. There are now two great wirebugs, cannons and balliste present. In the very first quest against Amatsu, Master Utsushi is at your side to assist. This is in line with most urgent story quests in Sunbreak, where Theorain would be with you. In addition to this, Amatsu's introduction cutscene is more in line to how Ryze's monster intros were rather than Sunbreak's, as the original narrator is doing the voiceover with the vintage film filter present. Finally, it shows its form a hurricane made flesh. When starting the quest, Amatsu will begin by flying to the main arena, and if you're quick enough, you can even fly alongside him. While the music is the same as it was in Portable 3rd, Amatsu himself has been completely recreated from scratch. Several of his old attacks have returned, swishing his tail, flipping through the air, and now he can flip through the air and swish his tail. His water projectiles are much bigger, and he can often follow up with different attacks, such as charging or flying in a circle. His water laser now leaves after explosions on the ground as he aims it upwards, but now he can also sweep it across the ground horizontally, he can also backflip twice in a row too. Amatu can create a wind tunnel, and while it's active, he can follow up with another attack. He can perform his old cyclone charge like he used to, but interrupting him with the installations will no longer knock him down. If he's successful in charging up, he doesn't physically move in such a wide circle like he used to. However, the attack where he creates three cyclones is now performed in phase one, and not only does he perform it much faster, but he sends out five of them. They dissipate on their own, rather than come together. During phase 1, Amatsu can launch everyone in the air, before sending several cyclones travelling in a straight line. After this attack, he will double up his cyclones, and perform the generation's G-rank tailspin. When Amatsu enters phase 2, he glows red, the music changes, and the storms intensify, just like they all did in Portable 3rd with the sky going from maroon to a shade of pink. Amatsu can now use Thunder Element, as he can use his tail to create two wheels of lightning that roll along the ground. His backflips now leave lightning on the ground that explodes. He can summon lightning bolts that strike in fixed positions, as well as different ones that track you. Whenever Amatsu rapidly moves in a circle in phase 2, he creates a wide but short cyclone that slowly moves and persists for a short time. This provides cover as he prepares for a surprise attack, and one of these can include a new water projectile that's slow, but extremely powerful with a wide radius. The cyclone can be jumped into by diving into the eye. He generates the rapid cyclones much faster than before, and his wind tunnel is now doubled up, making it harder to get away. Throughout this portion of the fight, his rate of attack is much higher than it was, and he still uses plenty of phase 1 attacks mixed in with the new ones. At some point in the fight, Amatsu will darken the area and rapidly fly around, creating thunder energy in the air. Eventually, he'll summon lightning that rapidly strikes it, more or less guaranteeing death. The only way to escape is to use the nearby great wire bugs that send you high into the sky, and hang there while the attack happens. Once enough damage has been dealt to Amatsu, a special guest will appear. The very first time you face Amatsu, Master Itsushi will lure Apex Zenoga to the arena who will proceed to battle Amatsu in a unique turf war that ultimately ends in the fanged wyvern being smacked down. Normally it is impossible to wyvern ride an apex monster, and so as always Zenoga will break free, only for Amatsu to strike him down again, making him rideable for real this time. You and Atsushi combined can take control and use him to battle Amatsu, ending with a special mounted punisher. This is the only time in Rise or Sunbreak where you can ride an apex monster like this. This isn't exclusive to the first quest, as Apex Zenoga will always appear if you've brought Master Itsushi along as a follower on subsequent attempts. However, if you don't bring him, Crimson Glow Valstrex will ambush Amatsu instead, and you get to ride him. There is no unique turf war this time. Later into the fight, Amatsu generates an aerial cyclone and takes you into it, where you must wire dash to avoid him charging at you. 
This is the last special attack he has up his sleeve, and the fight will continue as normal until he dies. There exists a hazard quest for Amatsu, released as the final event quest for Sunbreak. He has increased damage and a gargantuan amount of health in my experience, but there are also some minor differences in terms of attacks. He does the tailspin earlier in the fight, and all elemental attacks are visibly bigger. He summons far more lightning bolts, and the ones created by his tail are larger too. Amatsu tends to attack at a higher rate during this quest, and combined with all other factors, this makes him a genuine challenge. Crimson Glow Valshrex will always appear, as you cannot bring followers on event quests. When Amatsu dies, his special portable third quest clear music plays, and a storm clears in the infernal springs, giving way to clear sunny skies. This is the only time you'll ever see the arena like this, and it's a lovely sight. Amatsu is a dragon that fits really well into Portable 3rd, especially considering its Japanese theme. I like how he was very much tied to the story of that game, to a degree that was largely uncommon for most Tanks games before and even after, as usually the final hub bosses are tough and dangerous, but ultimately not involved in the game's main story. Amatsu being directly responsible for driving out Zenoga was a really cool detail that makes him relevant to the rest of the game. In some ways, I always felt like he was envisioned as a land-based Sadius, he was an elder dragon in Tri who fought exclusively underwater and made use of water elements. He too had the body structure of a leviathan, and when he returned to 3 ultimate, Amatsu was nowhere to be seen. I think Amatsu is far more interesting than him. The way he controls the weather and intensifies it as the fight goes on, the way he summons cyclones and dashes across the arena, those things are really cool. And because he's a fair bit smaller than Sadius, it's easier to see what he's doing and react accordingly. Amatsu is far more engaging to me, and I find it really clever how they made him move like an underwater leviathan, but in the air instead. The Sunbreak version is really interesting to me, not just because of how he was implemented into the game, but when. Kromura Village is not really relevant to Sunbreak, yet Amatsu arguably serves as the conclusion to that village's story. This is something I would maybe like to discuss in more detail in the future, but the way the Infernal Springs was introduced in Rise, and how the Kagero and Yamogi storyline was handled, really makes me think Amatsu was supposed to be in that game at some point, and they only got a chance to add him now. The Apex Zenoga moment to me is massive proof of this, because it only really hits if you've played a ton of Rise base game, and knew how big it was to Wyvern ride him. The Turf War itself feels like a higher budget version of the All Mother fight, where another monster would enter for you to Wyvern ride. In the previous episode, I discussed how adding a Cantor and Yukanos to 5th gen would be difficult, because aside from reanimating and overhauling their movesets, they would also have to redo their battle music and make new arenas. With Amatsu, they only really did the moveset parts, as they reused the Infernal Springs and his old music. I imagine they were stretched thin when bringing him back. Despite all this, Amatsu in Sunbreak is a really good fight. He's much faster than he used to be, and all his new moves and combos are really fun to deal with. The new weather for the Infernal Springs is amazing, especially the way it transitions to be more intense when he becomes enraged. Amatsu's themes are amazing. His phase 1 theme was unlike any battle theme we've heard before, because most of them are all... While Amatsu's is peaceful and serene, while still a little bit dangerous, and it's his phase 2 theme where things go crazy. At first, I was disappointed that the portable third tracks were not being remixed, because all the Monster Hunter tracks tend to loop really fast, but his theme holds up really well especially considering this Amatsu is so much more aggressive. Other than that, they did a really good job with Amatsu in Sunbreak. Despite some limitations, he is the best iteration of the fight, and a fantastic conclusion to Rise, albeit one that happened a bit too late. Which Amatsu is your favourite? Do you like how he was in Sunbreak? Let me know in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe, and have a good day.